Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm pleased to be joined by X Best Time employee, the man you can't see, but you can hear. X, how you doing? I'm very well, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm looking forward to getting the latest on all the West Ham transfer gossip. But I want to start with two West Ham players, first of all, Say Ben Rama and Nathan Gerd, because I want your opinion on this, because I feel from the sort of information I'm getting, mainly from yourself, is that I feel the club are sort of putting them up for sale without officially putting them up for sale, that makes sense. Yeah, I think there's a that is a definite case for that. I mean, with Ben Rama, as we all know, he's been a bit sort of hit and miss over the sort of last two years. Obviously, runner up in Hammer of the Year last year, maybe not reached the same heights this season, perhaps. And I think they would entertain offers for him. So they're not actively like, you know, putting him on a transfer list, for example. But if a Saudi team or a French team or some of the domestic teams that have been linked to come in for him, then I think the club would entertain the offers. I mean, at the moment, it seems most likely to be Saudi team or Lyon seem to be the two sort of front runners. But I think if they come in and offer a, a value probably close to what we paid for him, maybe a bit more, then I think the club would be prepared to accept that and hope to get someone in. Because with him and Agued, there's been a few... I don't want to say anything too controversial, but a few question marks around their commitment, I guess. And so with Agued, I think the club rate him as a defender. I think they, you know, they've obviously been a few mistakes, but I think on the whole, I think he's good. They wouldn't have signed him, you know, when they did. There's Pacey. We all know his traits. But if again an offer came in that was, you know, around the ballpark figure that we have in mind, then I think they would be prepared to take that, yeah. But as of now, no offers for, for either player? Not that I'm aware of. I think Ben Rama, out of the two of them, is probably closer to a move. Um, obviously, Gwed's at the African Nations, so focus is on that. I wouldn't be surprised if he stays for the rest of the season, I don't, at least. I don't think, it's from what I've heard, there's been any concrete offers. I don't know that there's been one for Ben Rama yet. I had heard that the Saudi club was close to making a move for him. Um, obviously, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow with um, the game against Bristol City. He should feature if um, you know, if everything's as it is. Um, but obviously, if he's close to a move, then he won't feature. But as far as I know, he's training and in mind to play in that game. And then we'll see where we are at the end. It will also depend on how close other players are um, to signing for us as well as to whether we let him go to. Yeah, well, the one advantage we've got this window, the one thing I hated in the summer transfer window was that the Saudi transfer window continued for a day mm. after the English one. And, you know, you saw the problems with Liverpool in that regards with Mo Salah and that. But this time around in the winter window, the Saudi window actually closes on the 30th of January. So it's earlier than the English one. So even if, they, if there was a late bid for, from their aspect for Ben Rama, we've still got a couple of days to try and sign somebody if Ben Rama leaves in the last minute. If, obviously, the interest in Kilman and Chaloba depends on if if we sell a Gerrard. If we don't sell a Gerrard, is it fair to say we won't make a move for a centre-back? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. I mean, Mavropanos is in line to be fit for the game tomorrow. Obviously, Obono has performed better than probably all of us would have thought he would have in recent games. And then if you've got Aguerd back and Zuma, you've got four centre-backs. We've Kalen Casey as a young, up-and-coming um, prospect from the academy. So I think they'd probably... Yeah, leave the centre back situation, but certainly Max Kilman is someone that we really, really like and have liked for a long time. Left footed, captain of Wolves, um, local lad, you know, six foot three, I think. So he ticks pretty much all the boxes that we we usually look for in a centre back. So I do believe if Aguerd goes, he would probably be certainly one of the key people we would move for. But at the moment, I haven't heard that Aguerd is close to leaving. So I, I would imagine. We'll be here till the summer, but as you know, mate, things can change in an email yeah. or a phone call, so we'll see. So at the minute, no plans to replace Tilo Carter then. Was he, not only was he surplus to requirements, but the, was he deemed almost like one defender too many for the squad? I think so, yeah. I think so, because if you look at the moment, the interesting one will be Ben Johnson, because obviously without Kerr, he's the natural sort of replacement for Kerr as such that can play you know, both full-backs and even centre-back if needed. He's homegrown as well. But his situation's interesting because he's got lots of clubs interested in him. The latest one appears to be Betis with 
Pellegrini as manager, but he hasn't signed a new contract. So I, I would imagine it's unlikely he would go on loan anywhere because obviously then at the end of it, he's a free agent. Um, yeah. And I would I would be surprised if Moyes would let him go at this point. I mean, interestingly, I have just had a phone call on my phone since I'm recording this from people connected to him. So we'll see. We'll see if anything um, has it's just developed there. But um, at the moment, I'd be surprised if they let him go. And I think he'll have to step up as Kerra's replacement. I mean, to be fair, Kerra didn't really get on the on the pitch much at all this season, did he? So in terms of actual playing time, there's not that much to replace. I think Oliver Skulls could be an option at left back. Um, and then obviously you've got Johnson to be the backup at right back. Cresswell's still there. So I think yeah, I think at the moment there isn't any immediate plans unless there's a, a deal that presents itself that we think, actually, you know what, this guy, we could take this guy. Um, but at the moment, no no urgency on that one anyway, I think. Perfect. We'll get on to Ben Johnson again because as mm. you've touched on it there. There's a situation arising with Ben Johnson, so we'll deal with him at the end of the video. But that's a, the defence clarified then. So no incomings unless Nathan Gerd leaves, and that's your targets. In regards to the offensive players then, how much does it depend on selling Saeed Ben Rama? Is it a case that we're trying to bring someone in anyway and they simply, if Ben Rama goes, we'd be bringing in two players, or does it does it depend on selling Ben Rama before we bring anyone else in? I think if Ben Rama goes, then you're almost certain that we will bring someone in. Um, but at the moment, we really like that Ghanaian uh, midfielder that I mentioned on my update, for those that have seen it, he's called Ibrahim Osman. We definitely like him. Now, he graduated from the same academy in... Um, in Ghana, as Kudos did, and he's now playing for their feeder club, which is a Danish team. Can't remember exactly how you pronounce their name. It begins with N anyway, for those more clued up on pronunciations than I. Um, and he is someone we definitely like. And I think because he's only 19, I think we would be interested in signing him either way, if Ben Rama goes or if, whether he doesn't, because he's certainly won the future that's massively rated. I know that Noble, Steinton, everyone, even boys, I think is behind this signing. It's just whether we can get it over the line because the likes of Arsenal, Brighton, Borussia Mönchengladbach and numerous other teams are interested. I think this transfer is going to break soon. I know it's been mainly me that's covered this one, but from what my sources in the media tell me, I think they've all sort of got onto this one. And this one, along with a couple of other players I mentioned in my last update, will start to be more in the public domain from today. And I think he is someone that we will go for um, regardless of whether Ben Rama's there or not. Obviously, if Ben Rama does go and we don't sign the Ghanaian, then we might look at other options. If Ben Rama stays, there might not be as much urgency. Um, but I think, yeah, it's, with us, we've got we've got um, lots of options, either or, but the main one is this guy here, Ibrahim Osman, um, and he won't be affected either way. We'll try and sign him um, regardless. What sort of price tag are we looking at for him? Have you heard that at all, roughly? Because I've, I've never heard of him. Until you put up your update on mm. Patreon the other day, I'd never heard of this guy. Neither and I. <laughs> should be told X. Yeah. I've still not heard of him, if that makes no. sense. I'm aware, I'm now aware of the name, but that's literally yes. all I know. Um, yeah. What sort of price tag are we looking for here? Well, Do you know? I think the figures we've been looking at for recruitments, as it stands, is around 15 to 20 million, no more. And I think he kind of falls into that bracket. Obviously, he's unproven. He's only 19. He's only played in Ghana and um, Denmark, as far as I'm aware, I think. Um, so he's unproven. So it would be a gamble. But at 19, I and mean, with the talent that he's supposedly got, you know, it's hopefully an educated gamble. And I think he, I think he would be around that sort of figure because that we're not looking at players that are beyond that. Obviously, we've been linked with him and there's the Mexican striker at um, Feyenoord, but he would be commanding a fee of around 50 million. That's not going to happen. We were looking at a Greek striker as well, uh, a Yondis or something along those lines, plays for Panathinaikos. But I've just found out today. He's too expensive as well. So I think the figure for all recruits at this point about selling players would be around sort of between 10 and 20 million, I think. Um, what position does he play? I know you probably just covered it there, but I might have missed it. What position is he's he? He's a winger, 
So he's, he's, he's yeah, more. I think he plays more so on the right, but I think he can play on the left and cut okay. in. So yeah, I think he's he's certainly he's known for his pace and his skill. And it's, when I put this name out, the Garnet and Hammers, who are quite a prominent supporters group on on Twitter and social media, they contacted me and they said. Not that I have any control over this, but they said we've got to sign him. We've got you must make sure we sign him. He's brilliant. You think Kudos is good? Wait till you see this guy. So from if their if their judgment on football players is anything to go by, then he sounds he sounds like a top talent. Right, I might I might have a little Google later. Then I, I try yeah. and I try and stay away from doing this because you, <laughs> you you see the good bits and you don't see the bad bits. That's but right, I might, yeah, I might have a little look later. Then um, is it fair to say that he's our number one target? Then you sound quite com or the news you're getting is it's quite you come across as quite confident that we will make a bid for him regardless of any. I outdoors. think so. Yeah, I think so. The other the other sort of similar type of player to him that we like is Yota now. That's a confusing one because there seems to be so many players called that in, in football. But he's the ex Celtic player who is in Saudi Arabia. And from my knowledge, he didn't get selected for their team. So he can't actually play for them. Yeah. Obviously, he's looking to move. Now, again, Gio, you, know, you might know about him from the, his Scottish roots, but uh, I don't know a huge amount about him. But apparently, he's very, very good as well. And he's looking to come to the Premier League again, as with any of these players. There's these other interest in him, but we'll be looking to explore that one a bit more as well. I think. But you're right. He is unregistered. They haven't. They haven't been. They're not able to play him. So he's technically, while he's got a club, he's not got a team to play for. If that makes sense. Mm, so yeah. um, he's, he's there. If somebody wants to go get him, and it's. Don't, well, is he good enough for the Premier League? I think he is. I think um, maybe not for a team. It depends, really, because. If you think of a team like West Ham as what we've achieved historically, you think, yeah, he probably is good enough for that side. But if you think of West Ham as a team that's now sixth in the Premier League, competing for European spaces on a season in, season out basis, I would say maybe not. But it depends what West Ham you want to look at. If you want to look at us as a club or us at form, if you like. Mm. Um, but given our sort of finances, and I have to be honest with you, my opinion or my my fear of FFP has changed in the last couple of weeks if you like, you know, not the boss and Everton getting sanctioned today, mm. Wolves are really scared at the minute, Newcastle are doing nothing, Eddie Howe said there's nothing mm. they can do, so actually yeah. you've almost got like a quarter of the Premier League can't do any business in the January transfer mm. window, so I've always I've always thought it was a little bit of a, a an easy excuse not to spend money, but it seems to have sort of got a bit serious since the government have intervened with football a little bit it's the Premier League are suddenly taking things a lot more serious now so actually I think it would be quite a good transfer to do with minimal outlay I'd imagine um Jack Clark then because so the, the noise has been around two players at West uh, potentially coming in it was Stephen Bergwijn but you've always been quite hesitant with that you've always said uh, i'm not sure about this this is going to be i actually don't want to sell him he's going to be expensive you, you've never been comfortable suggesting that we'd make a move for bergwine and it's gone a little bit quiet in the last week but it's been replaced with jack clark is that interest do you think serious from us yeah, I think there's interest in both players, Gio. I mean, uh, as you said, Bird Wine, there's definitely interest there. And we definitely spoke to Ajax. The key link here is Johnny Heitinger. Obviously, West Ham's coach. He used to be their manager last season. And, of course, Alvarez and Kudos came from there. So they'd be former teammates. That was definitely interest. But I think we went to them and said, you know, what are you you know, prepared to do? And they're like, you know, as I said, the same with Jimenez. They're like talking... 40 50 million for a transfer fee and they wouldn't loan him because he's their captain so i think that kind of puts them puts that one almost in the back burner unless we're prepared to pay a lot of money for him jack clark is a transfer that i broke myself um, a long time ago about three or four weeks ago and there's definitely interest in him 100 i had it confirmed by all the people that you would need to get a chance for confirmed to know it was legit and, and there's definitely interest the problem with him is that there's fears, obviously, over the fee. Could it go beyond 20 million? It's hard to say. But Sunderland, and another thing I said about the deal, there has been talk that we could get rid of the percentage sell-on fees for Equa 
and um, Elise, who amount to about 25%, I think, and Equa's already getting a lot of attention elsewhere. So if they was to lose that 25% sell-on clause, then that actually equates to quite a lot of money to them, potentially, if they sell him. So there has been definite discussions around Jack Clark. Obviously, he's a bit of a strange one because he's had periods in the Premier League. He was at Spurs, Leeds, and, and there's a, maybe a bit of a split opinion as to whether he can actually do it in the Premier League. Um, I think he's still a target. I think the Ghanaian lad is more so of a target. But if that one doesn't go through, then, then Clark is definitely a target. And what he offers that Osman doesn't is that he's homegrown. And that's a big... Um, a big criteria for us at the moment. Obviously, we lost Connor Coventry in the week that ticks that box, and so he would he would tick that box. And um, you know, there's there's talk that he could be another Gerald Bowen, possibly. So he's de- there's definitely interest there. But I I would say that the club are sort of holding off a bit at the moment, and a move could come depending on how it goes with this Ghanaian lad at the moment. Okay, so it'll be Osman or Jack Clark. Unless think, Saeed Ben Rama goes. Yeah, I think Osman, they'll bid for regardless. I think Jack Clark could be influenced by a rejection from Osman and then, or a bid not accepted, and then Ben Rama's situation. Because the thing you've also got to consider, um, Gio, is that Bowen and Pakatar, their injury verdicts are not meant to be as serious as initially first feared. So obviously, if they come back, your front three is, with Kudos back is going to be those three. So then you've got to sign someone that's prepared to be on the bench and and work for their place. And I think that's a consideration initially when the, you know, there was all this talk of transfers was when we thought Boeing could be out for three months, when we thought Pakistan could be out for two months, when the Kudos situation was unknown, things have calmed down a little bit on the injury front now. So there's not as much urgency to bring in a player now as perhaps there was five days ago or whatever. When you mentioned Osmin, um, this is a tricky question, I guess. You might not be able to answer it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, you said that Stade and Noble and David Moyes all like the player, so that they were in unison over that potential mm-hmm. side. In regards to Jack Clark, is I, which one of those or all three of them or two of the three? Who's the fan of Jack Clark at West Ham? I don't know on that one particularly, to be honest with you, Gio. I haven't been told either way. Um, when you look at him... It would suggest he's more of a David Moyes signing because well, he's born on this X, right? Because okay. that's, that's a natural like I understand why people come to that conclusion, but A Noble's very sort of give young players a chance and stuff. Mm. But also B Steiden or Leave accusing when Steiden was there did not mind dipping into the English market or seriously British market whatsoever. They signed yeah. uh, Fosu Mensa, uh Damari Gray, um Frimpon from Celtic. So actually, they've accused him. We're quite regular visitors to the British transfer market, actually. So I think it's, I get why people would assume it's a Moyes. Mm. It does feel like a Moyes one, but yeah. Steiden's no stranger to bringing somebody young through. And that's actually what a lot of the Bundesliga clubs are trying to do or have tried to do, which is bring in talent who can't get into the English teams, get them over to the Bundesliga and give them their first team opportunity there, then sell them back to England when they're now a first-team player and cash in on it. So, actually, I don't know. That's why I was asking. Um, Yeah, no, I don't know the answer. But you make a fair point there, mate. Maybe, maybe again, it is all of them. I I don't know. I just know the answer to Osman because I've asked that specific question. With Jack Clark, I haven't asked, so I I don't know. And I would be guessing if I guessed. But, as I did guess. um, But, yeah, I think there's a probably, in order for these transfers to happen... Moyes has to agree to them. So you know at some point he's got to be convinced. He might not like them initially, but by the end, if they're going to sign for West Ham, he has to have the final say. So he's always going to eventually have, it'll eventually be his player. Um, in terms of the recruitment, you know, obviously that's what Tim's main role is. Um, and Noble is there to help him. So you could make an argument for all three. You're right. Um, so yeah, um, but I don't actually know specifically. Right, um, two, next two very quick answers because I don't want to keep for too much longer. Um, right. There's no striker talk. Is it fair to say? I know Jurassic is being linked and has sort of disappeared again. He's back in the news today, but more because other clubs want him. Mm. Is it fair to say that a striker is unlikely in this window? 
I would say unlikely, although to be fair, we were keen, as I mentioned earlier, on that Greek forward. But as I say, that's not going to happen now, I don't think, unless they change their stance. So there's obviously some interest in getting forwards to the club. Um, but with forwards, they cost more money, um, as we all know. And in January, clubs are less likely to sell them unless they're out of favour or they're a smaller club looking to step up. So I think we would consider the right options. But at the moment, the key ones seem to not be happening. Um, as you say, Garazi, Grazi, whatever you pronounce it, he was a key target. But there's, it looks like Manchester United are looking at him now and a few other teams. And so whether we'd get him or not, no, you would have to see, but I think I think all I think options are there for all all of the main positions. But with the return to fitness of these players now, I think and you've got to think Antonio as well. Whether you love him or hate him, he's still a forward option. Um, that Callum Marshall's been told that he's not going to go on loan. He's been told to stay with us at the moment. We've not sanctioned Danny Ings or Divine Mabama going anywhere. So actually, if you look at it whether you rate them or not, just by definition of forwards, we have quite a few. Um, so it's just it's just going to be the right deal. I think if the right deal comes up and we can maybe shift Ings possibly, which with his wages is hard, then um, that's the current situation, I would say. One to keep an eye out for. I don't know if you're going to ask this, but just to drop it in, and I think it's going to break in the media again today, it's Calvin Phillips. Now, this is an interesting one because his wages are huge. Um, and I think Man City are demanding a, tra- a loan fee that's significant as well. Moyes loves Calvin Phillips. I know that fact. He wants to pair him with Declan Rice, obviously, when we had him. And if we can get a deal where Manchester City agrees to pay his wages, then I think he could be a consideration, which is interesting because if you think about terms of positions, you wouldn't say that Calvin Phillips' position is the priority. But maybe he could shuffle around the midfield a little bit and it, it gives you different options. But he's one to keep an eye out on because, as you said, Newcastle were keen on him, but they seem really worried about FFP. So they may not make a move for him. And then he's in limbo again. And Manchester City could just get him out for a better yeah. deal than perhaps they hoped to. Ben Johnson, then, um, you mentioned mm. earlier he's been linked to Real Betis, Pellegrini's side, and Villarreal. Now, while he's obviously been linked to Leeds and Southampton as well, more for on loan, there's only so much they can do, which is deal with West Ham. But obviously, given the nature of Ben Johnson's contract and with it having less than six months to go, Real Betis can actually now negotiate a contract with Ben Johnson and get him yeah. at the end of the season on the free. Does this force West Ham's hand now? Because there's always been some talk we might offer him a new contract. It does feel now that if this interest from Spain is genuine, the club have got to decide now, really, if they want to offer a new contract or not. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's been a bit of a standoff for a while now over this contract. Um, the situation, as I understand it, and obviously I'm, you know, I'm not privy to the contract discussions, but the way I understand it is Ben Johnson obviously sees himself as a maybe not a first team regular, but it's certainly someone that's on the fringes of being in the first team regularly. I mean, more often than not, he's at least on the subs benches and each week. Um, so he sees himself as a first team, first team player, and therefore he wants a contract re- re- replicates that. Now, what that is is debatable because obviously you've got Danny Ings on an inflated one, and then you've got the likes of Vladimir Shafal who are on quite a low, low one. Shafal's obviously further ahead than Johnson in the pecking order. So if you then offer Ben Johnson more than Chappelle, you've got yourself an issue there. So there's a there's a there's a, a problem with the club in that respect. That Ben Johnson is obviously on the fringe of being an academy player, a first team player. So Ben Johnson wants a first team representative wage. West Ham wants to give him a, a wage that's better than your sort of your average academy player, obviously, but not quite the wage of a first team player. So it's been going on, going on, going. You're right. Your players can go abroad now on a pre-agreed contract in the summer. So if West Ham want to get anything for him, then they have to get him to a contract. So we'll push West Ham. I think contract negotiations will happen again, um, and then we'll see where it goes. But Ben Johnson's got the power now because he knows that these clubs are interested in him. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky situation to, to, for West Ham to be in. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's... um one to keep an eye on because there's lots of clubs interested but as you say Betis are the game changer because we're going to have to start making making moves um, soon to get him tied up or we'll go there 
Right, last topic then, David Moyes. There was um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, was, it might have been after the, when we beat Arsenal, I think it was, David Moyes said, oh yeah, we're going to have talks soon. And it came out very quickly that David Sullivan was planning on having talks. You reported there was, I think you, to phrase you correctly here, I think you said there was meetings planned between mm. Moyes and the board. Is that still the case? So it's gone very quiet in the last couple of weeks. Mm. So what's the situation regarding West Ham offering David Moyes a new contract? Okay, just before I say that, Gio, I've just had a message come through there that I think the interest in uh, Ghanaian and Phillips and Jota is going to break on social media, on news outlets and social media. I just had a journalist tell me there. So I just want to say, you can confirm for me, it's 3.09 now. So I don't know when you're putting this I podcast. Uh, it'll be up ASAP, trust okay, me. Okay, so we might, I'm going to try, I'm going to race Sky Sports here. Yes, so race them and see if we can get it out before then. <laughs> Basically, we've got a race against time. Wait, 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 um, I'll, 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 prove, I'll prove it. Here, here you go. There's the time. Uh, that's not yeah. going to help, is it? Let me go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, you still you read can, your you personal message the now. The, it's it, 10 past perfect. three. Right, there you right, go. Nice one. Right, so back because people always say, oh, he's just copying off Sky. So I want to prove that it's, it was out there anyway, but I just wanted the evidence. Right, anyway, back to the David Moyes question. Yes, I think contract talks will happen um, over the next sort of months or so, but obviously the transfer window is the priority right now. So whilst obviously you can do more more than one thing at the same time, I think they'll be focusing on that. The fact of the matter is that he's been involved in selecting the players, been involved in negotiations and saying who he wants. You wouldn't do that for a manager that you were planning to kick out in you know, three, four months' time. So I think that, that in itself suggests that the club are planning to offer him a new deal. Of course, you know, it's a results-based business. If we if we start, you know, from this period onwards to get knocked out of all the cup, the two cups we're in and plummet down the league, I would imagine he won't be given a new deal. But the plan at the moment is to give him a new contract. Talks are ongoing. I think he'll probably sign, you know, right towards the end of the season would be my guess um, because he seems quite comfortable in sort of the situation himself. He's not pushing it to get one done now. Um, but I do. My gut instinct is that he will be the, the manager next year and the year after as well. Perfect. Well, X, thank you very, very much. I, I appreciate that. I've enjoyed listening to you, actually. And it's good to get... Oh, one of a uh, few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good to get cla- good to get, get clarity on all the transfer rumours. Um, I was surprised. I say surprised. I, don't, I, say, I can't say if it's a good one or not because I've never heard of him, but I'm surprised that our number one target is someone that's unproven. So they must have very high hopes for this player, um, Ibrahim Osmin. So I'm off for a little Google uh, before trying and get this video up before Sky Sports do. Yeah. But X, thank you very much for joining me. No, my pleasure, mate. Thanks anytime. If you guys like to hear, I, I always say and see, you can't see, but if you'd like to hear more from X, head over to the West Ham Way Patreon. The link will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, though, because you can see me, please do drop a like on it by clicking the thumbs up. Subscribe to the Hammers Chat. I'll catch you in a bit. Ooh.